to another edition of Alive and Kicking on Location. I am Lisa Marie Benz, your hostess with the mostest, and I am so excited because I am actually here in Sin City right now, in Viva Las Vegas, baby. It doesn't get much better than this, and I'm here at the fabulous Flamingo, right here on the Strip in Vegas, getting ready to interview my favorite comedian of all time, Vinny Favorito. So stay tuned, and we'll hear all about where he's from, all about his humor, and we want you to come see him at the fabulous Flamingo. So stay tuned, and I'll be here with Vinny. All right, so I'm here with my all-time favorite comedian here on the ship, Vinny Favorito. I like you better than the redhead crazy guy up the road. Oh, um, Carrot Top? Well, we're a whole different hat. Well, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, he lives in a chest, and I like to look at chest. So that's the difference. <laughs> I guess that's why I'm in here. That's anyway, it. so now you have been thought of as the Don Rickles... With Venom. Yes. Actually, I was given that name by, God rest his soul, the famous Milton Berle. I, when I lived in L.A., I used to get uh, brought in to do the shows for all the old Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Milton met, met me, he just thought I was just, he, you know, and I was at a different table for the event. He says, bring the kid over here. And I sat right there with him and his wife, and he brought the photographers over. He says, take some shots of me and the kid. He goes, this is the new Don Rickles with Venom. And he, he said, that's going to be your new nickname. And it was, it was a real honor for me, you know what I mean? I mean, just to meet these people. Right. Well, I call you the EOOer. EOOer? Do you know what that means? No. Equal Opportunity Offender. Yes, that is true. <laughs> that is very true. I am Equal Opportunity. <laughs> so I just got done watching your show. Yes. Of course, it was great. And I've noticed, and I noticed this a couple of years back when I saw you before, I've talked about you to everybody. I appreciate it. Because you, you go around the room and you basically ask people a couple things. Their name, mm -hmm. where they live, and what they do for a living, and you have fun with everything That's with it. that. And then we bring them all back and forth, tie them in, I yeah. call back to them, and you think it's over, but it's not, and it's just, and I'm known because my memory's like scary. Because you remember all these names. That's what I meant by memory. Yeah. I, <laughs> you're kind of like Rain Man. Yes. I am like an artistic <laughs> Don Rickles, actually. And I'm also, I'm like a, I'm a rose growing out of cement. That's the best way to, to describe me. You know what I mean? Right. Now, how, how do you deal with it when you get someone that's like a, like, well, that mean lady tonight. Well, All the... <laughs> Or what if you get someone that's worse that they're just sitting there? But you know what? Like that's you now a I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up, though. You say the mean lady. You're sitting in the back. That's uh -huh. the beauty part of the show. Um, whether she's mean or not, you really don't know. I'm portraying her as that. She's actually laughing, having a great time. But her first words out when I say her name, because that's when people are most shocked. They go, "What's your name?" And she look up and she go, "Lola." And I go, right. Wow, you come on, little bitchy. You know what I mean? And that's how it right. starts. So everyone in the crowd thinks she she is that way, and that's when I'll hit her with all the. What do you work the DMV and you know it was your last mm, a square one you know stuff like this YouTube I suppose I can swear on YouTube right? yeah absolutely yeah. but uh, <laughs> she actually had a great time and she you know she's laughing and all this but see that's the beauty part the crowd doesn't know it they, you know they think wow was she really a bitch and they're looking you know but most of the time they're not once in a while you find one that is the best time that ever happened though we had a uh, Italian this is so, so Italian so I, I said, the guy was with his wife. I said, well, she's a bitch. I go, how long are you together? He says, 11 years. I says, 11 years. Did you ever hit her? And I don't condone that, but I'd say she brought her. He goes, now when you say hit, do you mean like a full blown, you know, I mean, that's how, how Italians are. I love that. That was the best response I ever got from them. You know what they say? You, you can't hit your wife, but you can hit the bottle. Yeah, there you go. No, no so, hitting the bottle. Now, how did you get here to the Flamingo? Well, I, uh, I had a road, you know, comedy, but when I was first uh, offered to have my own show was by Bill Volkner, Matt King, and Harris, Caesars Entertainment. Um, and uh, I used to do the improv, you know, and I'd come in every couple of months. And years before that, I did the trop every couple of months. I'd mm -hmm. come in. And then when I moved to the West Coast, Bud Friedman discovered me, and I uh, started doing the improv, and I was the number one ticket seller at the improv. Always packed, always jammed. So. Of course, when you hear about this one guy that comes into town, people would funnel to the Matt King show, and Bill, Bill Volkner, who's my producer, also produces that show, kept hearing about this guy, Vinny Favre. He didn't know who I was. Then he came down, he saw me, and this and that, and that's when they approached me and said, you know what, we'd like to uh, offer your own show. And so I did it. We started downtown. They had just bought 
Binion's, Harris did. They bought it and sold it like an hour later. But the deal in the selling it was they had to manage it for one year. So I went down to Binion's. I was the first headliner and last headliner ever in Binion's property because Benny Binion didn't believe in, uh, you know, entertainment in, this, in, the, in the casino. So uh, I was there a year. And I went to this little dive next door, O'Shea's, that they're turning into the big quad thing and all that stuff. Was there for three years, and then finally the room opened, and Don Marandino, um, there was some big names up for the for the room, and Don Marandino said Vinny Favorito's getting it. And that was it. And I've you've been, been here for four and a half years? Four, in 08 I signed to, you know, re-signed, and then a uh, couple of years after I was here, they asked me to re-sign for another seven years. So, yeah, I'm here, and it started in 08 as far wow. as the flamingo. That's amazing. And you are here every night. Seven nights a week. Even God took a day off. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> I take a vacation, you know, once a while, and uh, I have a beautiful wife and kids now, two young kids, and one's four months old and one's four years old. So now the difference with Vinny Favorito is when it's Halloween or, or something like that, anything that involves the children, I want to be a good dad and I'll take that night off. But otherwise, I'm working every night except for when you schedule a vacation. But you know what, I work an hour and 15 minutes a night, uh, and I'm just like anybody else. I'll be at home at 6 o'clock, I'm going to get ready for work. But once I get in the shower and I get here, I'm the same energy every night. Never changed in how many years, never changed, because I love my job. The day I don't enjoy telling jokes or busting people's balls is the day <laughs> I'll quit this job. But I don't see it happening, you know, I really enjoy my job. That's me. I mean, everybody wants to be so passionate about their job. That's it, and I have the best crowds in the world. No, I wouldn't trade my crowds for anything. And I have what most people don't have, the most repeat business in the city. Because the show's different every night, so people come, you know, and they come over. The lady came out tonight, 23rd time, you know what I mean? I love when they say that to me. It's very flattering, and I know I'm doing my job well. So. Right. And um, other than Rip Taylor, have you ever made someone... <laughs> <laughs> you heard about the Rip Taylor story? Cry or storm out of the oh audience? Oh, my God. Yes, I did my research. That was actually, you know, the Rip Taylor thing was really something. I can't even believe that. You were ripping research. on Rip. <laughs> well, yeah, but that was at the Friars Club. I was, doing a, I was doing a roast at the Friars Club, and he was in the audience, and I made a comment... <laughs> Just like people were unaware, and then oh, he was actually at my table. And I came back, well, he was furious. He sent letters to the Friars Club, and they're all, of course, busting my chops, laughing. And some like, what? What did I say? I mean, I think it's everybody knew, didn't they? You know, are you kidding me? Am I the only one who noticed? It was just a comment, and it was. Uh, but it was funny to me. Isn't he funny. famous for the Dollar Ninety Eight Beauty Show? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now uh, I'm aging myself. <laughs> he used to come out with the spritzer. Remember on those old jokes? <laughs> <laughs> and you I got the funky mustache. Yeah, yeah. You were probably making fun yeah. of the mustache, the handlebars. <laughs> I made a comment that he was gay, and, and I'm like, it was a comment like, if I'm not this, then Rip Taylor's not gay, and that's what the comment was. And then, ooh, I heard that, and I went, what? Am I the only one who knew? You know? Right. And it was a big joke. Everyone was laughing, and he couldn't stand it. They get so. Sensitive. He thought nobody knew, and I'm like, really? <laughs> okay, you don't him. even make me talk about your hairpiece, because I, I will. <laughs> but he's uh, he's actually a very nice guy. You know? Right. Yes. So now, you like to play off of slang words, and it's so funny yeah. what you say about the... <laughs> what? The what? <laughs> the guineas, no, the dangos, yeah, the, yeah. the, <laughs> the beaners, my people, yeah, and my then bags, there's the yeah. black people. <laughs> we call black people. I mean, I mean that sums it up because that you know the key to the joke is, I cover these different ethnicities, including my own first. I would never go after anybody else without going after me first. That's mm -hmm. what makes the show work. That's what makes you. Know, but you know it is true. I say the slang word about the Mexicans, the slang words about the Asians, the slang words about the Italians. Then as I'm about to say the black, everybody's thinking what I'm going to say, and I come out black people call black people. But see, that's the mentality of the country. They all have their own words, what they're thinking. And then the blacks look at me when I say black people call black people, and they go, you know Right. I mean? uh -huh. So it's just, a, it's just a twist they don't see coming, but it really is reality, you know what I mean? No, is there any... I'll tell you, I used to teach comedy, and I used to tell mm -hmm. my students, um, what things you shouldn't talk about is things that would divide a room, okay? And what would divide a room is religion. You gotta be good. You gotta be a good joke if you're gonna talk about religion. Religion, politics can divide a room. Um, and I don't ever talk about rape, cancer, or AIDS. 
because it's the three biggest things that no matter who's in that audience, someone is affected by. It. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, that's where I don't go. And I don't, you're bald, I don't, you're fat. I don't do anything personal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm really, you think I'm up there, and I am shitting on people, but you think I'm up there, but I don't hurt people. I don't hurt their feelings. You know what I mean? Unless they're an asshole heckler, then I'll bury them. Yeah. I'll hit them with everything. You don't want to heckle, but people know that when they come to my show. 98% of them, before they get there, my staff has heard people lying, go, hear a drunk guy, go, I'm going to fuck with this guy, and blah, blah, blah. They don't say people, because they realize when I come out from the get go, maybe this isn't the guy. You know, we'll wait for a magician. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't hurt. I won't hurt people. I just I don't. I don't agree with it. I won't. I won't do it. You know what I mean? Now, how do you test new material? You know what? I don't write jokes down. I'm up. Most of my show has evolved from ad lib. So in other words, a lot of the stuff you hear in the show was once an ad lib. But every night there's new stuff. Like you see the people I'm talking to, they're not there every night. So mm-hmm. whatever just comes up comes up. But there's always that one joke that will stand out more no like like we'll get back to the black people we call black people one night i just did that and it got such a response i said this will work every night you know Mm -hmm. what i mean or if i get the mexican or the black guy with the white name it'll work you know what i mean it'll work again that's the uncoolest name of ever you know he never ran with a street gang you know what i mean chris is he coming after (laughs) i mean that's that's just how it works you know what i mean so my show i don't write it down i figure if i can't remember it it's not funny you know what i mean and if I do remember it, I'll try it again, and it'll work. And, and nine times out of ten, if it works, I know it's going to be part of the show. And that's why in the middle I do that rant that you might have heard tonight. I make it seem like some of the crowd's ooing me on some things. I go, hold on a sec, I can't take this anymore. You know, it's fun to break people's walls, and that's when I go through the things about the paraplegic in the back. <laughs> and the yeah. but I'm putting it out there, but really I'm just subliminally telling them, Relax, it's okay. You know what I mean? And they are already having a good time, but I make it seem like they're not. You know, it's always it's always not what it is, you know? Mm-hmm. Well you have a really good talent for that. And um, other than Jerry Lewis, who would you say is your favorite comedian? You know, I've been asked that a million times in interviews, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't have a favorite comedian. I have respect for all comedians out there. We're all different, different styles. You know, there's political comics. Not, which isn't my thing, but there are a couple political comics that make me laugh. You know, I, th- I have a lot of respect for all of them. I'm not a prop act guy, but I like Carrot Top. He, you know, he'll make he'll do something make me chuckle. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think it's funny. We all have different styles, but uh, when people ask me who's your favorite comic, the truth is, I, when I got into comedy, it was a booming thing in Boston. And Boston has the best comics you've ever seen in your life. Guys you'll never see in your life, but they're that good. And I came up through the ranks and caught up to these guys in the headliner status where there were lines of guys like me trying to get in and break through. And there were certain groups of us like Nick DiPaolo, myself, Jackie Flynn, we, we all broke out together. And we, we made it through and we're all out here working, doing our, this business. And, uh, but we had guys back home like Don Gavin, most hysterical guy I've ever seen, Kenny Rogers, and who comes to Vegas once in a while hysterical Steve Sweeney one of the best you've ever seen and these these are Boston guys that are just so hysterical but as far as on a national level a lot of guys Tim Allen I think is is just really great um uh Rickles of course I get compared to all the time but I like Rickles I think he's great I used I love to watch the old roasts and stuff Mm -hmm. that's what what I'm known for roasting but I just think every comic out there is doing their thing they're really good. And there's guys that the crowd, you know, you know, look different upon, like Dice Club. I'm friends with Dice. He, he he was on top of the world, then he went through all the negativity, but so did Howard Stern. And and Howard Stern's get got through it. And Dice is coming back. He's out there working and you know, I got a lot of respect for that. Yeah, well you're a little bit of Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah, I'm working on that. I think it's mainly in that <laughs> your pose. That, yeah. that one pose and everything. Now, how did you get to do these celebrity roasts, like Pat O'Brien and Magic Johnson and everything? I've done so many of them. And the funny thing is, uh, Bud Freeman, um, the first roast I did was out here. They brought us from L.A. to do the Hard Rock, uh, the owner of the Hard Rock back then, Morton. And uh, then we do the celebrity basketball game. It was a, they do it every year, and it's for the Eris Foundation. So all these big basketball stars and the ones that were just signed to the NBA and then they have a you know, game, a celebrity game and, and they do the roast and 
it's all these big names, and I'm sitting there and they're taking pictures of people, saying I'm literally trying to lean in just to get in the picture because nobody knew who I was. And Bob Saget was the roast master, and uh, this was the first one. And the the roast started, and Bob was dying. This one's dying. I go up. No one knew who I was, and I destroyed the place. I got a standing on with the roast, and everybody's like, uh, now all the cameras are on me, they're taking pictures of me, now I'm like this. Earlier in the day, I tried to get to the the suite to get the basketball clothing, and they literally opened the door and said, come back another time, and shut the door. I'm like, really? After that, they're calling my room, come get your stuff, come down to the suite, you know, because no one knew who I was. And Bud Freeman was walking around like a proud peacock. Told you, told you, told you, because <laughs> I actually stole the show. And that was it. From then on, every roast on the West Coast, they'd call me, call me. I did Eris Foundation year after year after year with uh, Arnold Swords and all these guys. I mean, just over and over again. And uh, then New York would call me, but you know what, I'm like, well, I, they don't pay you, so I'm not going to New York. I'm just going to stay and I'll do the West Coast ones. So that's really how it happened, but I've done so many. So, so if someone wants to have you come roast somebody... Yeah, I'm they... doing one next week here in town, right? Yeah. So you are available for roasting. <laughs> oh, always. But it's usually for a cause, and uh -huh. that's why I do them. You know, the kids at the Eras Foundation, Tom Arnold runs that one, and I, I'm just a, I always want to help, you know, a good charity, you know, especially that involves children. And, uh, yeah, the, the ro it's one of my favorite things, but the reason why they bring me, and the way it works is if I'm not the roast master, I go last before the guest of honor, because I, everyone who's shitting on him, I get up and end up shitting on everybody else, and I never write a joke till the, sh till the roast starts. That's the beauty of me on a roast. And I feed off of everything everyone on that day has, has said during the roast. And it's pretty electric. And there's some of those on YouTube, so. Yeah, of, I, I saw them. I don't even know who puts those on there. Who does that? <laughs> well, anyway, so who is your least favorite comedian? Ah, least favorite? Mm -hmm. You mean like nationally known least favorite yeah, comedian? Yeah, that we might all know, like someone that you, if you see them when you're channel surfing, you would just keep going. Yeah? Uh, well, Did not, I get you? Who's not working in town this month? <laughs> um, I don't well, know. Well, least let me favorite. ask you, do you like Conan O'Brien? I think he's a genius. Conan's a genius. And what about David Letterman? Genius. Leno? Genius. Do you have a preference? Which uh, one would you watch? Yeah, I have a preference. Letterman. Okay. I like to watch that. Okay, good. Yeah. And, and Jimmy um, Fallon, great, oh, fabulous, yeah. fabulous. Well, I just so heard fun. today on the news that Jimmy Kimmel is from Las Vegas. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, I, did. I know two different Jimmys, but I yeah, yeah, yeah I did know that. I don't know Jimmy, but I knew that. So um, now, do you still have? You're still working with Humor Boot Camp? No, you know, uh, this guy's like a brother to me, Darren Lacroix. I mean, mm -hmm. and he does this great job. He's actually a champion public speaker with these Toastmasters, which is like the hardest feat to win. He won the big national thing. And he used to be a student of mine in comedy. He was the most timid guy you ever met in your life. Out of all my students, this guy would shake when he's around me. He still does to this day. He was just at my show last night, actually, he came in. He's the greatest guy in the world. But he had uh, said, I would love to get you to do a human boot camp with me. I said, if you move to Vegas, I'll do it. He moved to Vegas. He lives there, and he, uh, now his boot camps come out here, and he does all these public speaking boot camps, but he'd have humor ones. And we did some together. Um, but he he does so many boot camps and stuff, and I was just like, you know what, Darren? I said, it was cool for a while, but right now I'm just going to take a break from it because now I have kids. You know, it's different. You know, I, I'm a new, you know, I'm a dad now. So I don't have that kind of time to just always go off and do this and do that. But uh, it's actually really good. These public speakers, they're great speakers, but they lacked humor. And a lot of, a lot of through businesses and stuff like that is to have humor. Humor is actually a great It thing. actually is. Yes. And that's I mean, why the humor boot camps are great. And he does still do them. And sometimes I do go in for a few minutes while he's having them and speak to his, uh, you know, his class that he's having. Um, but him and I did do the camps together for like two two days and we all day long, all day long. But like you say, with the kids now, I just really don't have time for them. But you can find that at humorbootcamp.com. Yes. Now, are you suggesting that you could take someone that's really not no. funny at all, which, you know, like Undertaker or something, and make him funny? Well, there's two ways of looking at this. When I talk comedy, I used to have shows in all over Boston as far as every part 
major comedy club. So I had all the open micers, the new guys. So I got to see them. Now, I would say a lot, everybody wanted to be in my class, and I could only take a certain amount at a time, and I would say to them, uh, it's easy just to take the dough, but I'm just telling you, if I don't see it in you, I'm not, I'm not going to waste your time. Mm -hmm. time. So I would always see them. Where the humor boot camps are different. These are people that give speeches. They're just looking for a little tweaking, a tune-up. What uh -huh. can I throw in there to be funny? What can I, you know, give them a little personality? One thing, you can teach comedy. You can teach people to tell a joke. What you cannot teach is timing. You cannot teach timing to anybody. I've heard people tell street jokes, and, and you go, ugh. It was horrible. You didn't even put any punch into that. You know what I mean? Timing is a, is really a gift. That's mm -hmm. when you know, you know, you've got this. You know what I mean? Timing. They say timing is everything. That's right. And obviously, it really is. You can't. You cannot teach timing. You got to know when to throw that in or that gesture or that facial expression. You know, that's timing. Yeah, your expressions yeah. are amazing. And it's, <laughs> and it's happened for years. I've developed. You know, hey, look. When I first started on comedy. People thought I was good. I sucked. I've seen videotaping me. It was horrible, you know. And around town, I was a heavy favorite to win this big amateur competition. This that. I was horrible. But I'm polished. I'm doing this a long time, and I do it more than most of these guys in the business. Do. I'm out there every night. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm. I feel like a young kid in this business. Like I'm at my in my prime. I mean, I'm on top of my game, and my shows get stronger and stronger every night because I do it every night. The beauty part of my show is the room's full, or it's three quarters full. They get the same energy. I don't like back off because oh, this this could suck. It's only three quarters full. No, I give it my all all the time. That's because I have the passion. I love the job, and I love what I'm doing. I love my crowds. And when I have a challenging crowd, like a tougher one in the beginning, or mm -hmm. that group of old people. Those are my favorite the shows. Old people. Yeah, screw the easy shows where you come out, you could drop your keys and everyone's laughing. But when you got that group and you know, oh, I gotta, I gotta earn their trust. This, this is gonna take some work. And I get them. There's no better feeling to me in the world. Nothing, because I win. I win every night. Have you seen Betty White? White show off their rockers. I have not. Oh, but gosh. she's she's just fat. I could just see just her funny. just coming to your show. <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> even have to. Row. She doesn't even have to talk. I, I see her face on the TV because they show her back in the TV land days, and then I show her presently, and I laugh then. I go, it's like someone tipped over a dollar bill. There's Washington, you know. <laughs> but you know what? She's a funny lady. She's been around a long time, and God bless her. Mm -hmm. You know, George Carlin, God rest his soul, was one of my biggest fans. He used to come see me when I was at the Trop at the Comedy Store. And he come in. He goes, I'm, I'm like your biggest fan. He says, Vinny, I don't go to, I don't go to shows. I've been in your show three times. But you know what I love about you? You walk that line, but you just think you're crossing it. And boom, you bring everybody back in. Mm -hmm. You can dig a hole and get out of that hole like no one I've ever seen in my life. And you know, this is, these are guys that I grew up listening to. And you go, oh my God, I can't believe he just said that to me. You know what I mean? So, and I thank them all for paving the way for guys like us. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that is true, though. I mean, you really, you just, you are able to be edgy and interactive with the crowd, and it's like you know when to right. back off. You think I'm about to <laughs> and just drive it in, and you go, oh, where'd he go? He's over there now. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that's what I do. I, I'll shit on you, shit on you. Then I pick you up and dust you off. You think it's over, and boom, I come back and I get you again. You're like, oh, he caught me again. You know what I mean? But I will not, I will not hurt your feelings. I will not have you leave that room where... Wow, that sucks. In tears. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so I got some Facebook questions for Go. you. Kim, Chloe, or Courtney? Uh, and you do Courtney. know you are keeping up with the Kardashians, Courtney. I take it. Okay. Um, boxers or briefs? Boxers. <laughs> well, I know the answer to this because you talked about it. Boxers because it's brief. <laughs> um, blondes or brunettes? Uh, brunettes. Oh, I thought you said you like blondes. No. You were just playing to the crowd. Brunettes. That's okay. just to get to the blonde jokes. Right, okay. Marianne or Ginger? Ginger. Okay. And are you always funny even when you're at home with your wife? Some, yeah, a lot. I mean, does she ever... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like my not... wife, my <laughs> wife Nicole, was the quietest little innocent, you know, she really was a quiet girl. And that's what happens when you end up with guys like us. She's the most sarcastic bitch, you know, to me. She's nice to <laughs> that's other what people. you've done to her. Yeah, she's nice to people, but around people, she, she she takes shots at me all the time, and I blame me. I blame me. You've created that monster. Yeah. Well, and, and what do you do for fun with Nicole? Like, here you are in Vegas. I make her watch Dateline. 
<laughs> the to catch a predator edition? No, I make you watch Dateline to what these husbands do to their wives, and then I call the insurance company and tell them to cancel my policy. <laughs> Because I don't want to be the suspect. Right, right. <laughs> Do you remember the game show from the 70s called Make Me Laugh? Yes, yes. I think we should bring it back. I, I agree. They did. What they are you did? talking about? They did. It they did fought? bring it back. Mark, um, oh, he used to be part of the Rap Back show. Um, oh, what's Mark's last name? Cohen. Mark Cohen was the was the host. Look it up. He's a, they did bring it back. And Mark Cohen was the host, but and, it didn't fly. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I I thought that was the best yeah, show. Yeah, I and, did too. And um, the guy with the watermelon. He used to crush Gallag open. Gallagher. Gallagher. Yeah. That's where I first learned about him. Yeah. Did, yeah. By the way, did you know he's homeless? He's homeless. <laughs> I did not. Which one? The brother or him? Him. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, so I guess the uh, the watermelon. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. Well, he just, it was on Dateline. Oh. What were the odds no. that this guy would end up homeless? Really? Now, with, your, with you comedians and stuff, is there like a comedian networking group where you guys all meet like once a month? Or in, no, there's guys that try that. There's, no. there's a guy here in town, I get a, every week I get a thing, hey, come on down, we're gonna, we'll have food and this and they do that over at Hooters. They try to get everybody together. It's a nice thing. It's cute, but you know, you know they're, they're, they do have groups of them. I'm not into that clicky thing. This one's more entertainers, not comics. But the one that was, the uh, Geechee guy was doing over at Hooters was comics. I'm just not into the clicky comic thing. Comics hate each other. Comics, you're in the room, then you leave the room, they shit on each other. You know, like, I, I'm not into it. Whatever. Is it because it's all competitive? Yeah, of course, of oh, course. Okay. And there's some legitimate good guys out there that are friends with other guys. And it's but you know what? It's a small community. You know, when you're standing there, they got nothing but good things to say about you. When you're not standing there, a lot of them don't have good things to say about you. Well, so. that's how women have been forever. That's it. And they're little <laughs> bitches, so that's how I feel yes. about that. So, now, if people want to get tickets to come see your wonderful show, mm -hmm. how do you prefer they contact? Call, call the Flamingo? Yeah, you can go through the four. There's all kinds of ticket agencies out there, just like any other show. But uh, Vegas, uh, Michael could give the best Vegas.com, I believe. Oh, yeah, there you go. And the 702-733-1111. That's it. And you can also go to FlamingoLasVegas.com. Yeah. And the, trust me, if you come to the show, if you come to the show, you'll be back. You'll, you'll, you will be back. I have people that, oh, I came because my, my father was there. He said, you got to see that show over there. Was he right? He was right. Or this is our fifth time, our tenth time. There isn't one night, and I'll take any bet with anybody, any time. Not one night. You could stand outside my show for a solid seven nights, and there won't be one night where someone doesn't come out going third time, fifth time, seventh time, tenth time. There's, that's that's what I'm confident about in my show. There's always repeaters there, and I love it. I love it. I thank them. You know. That's amazing. It that is. You just keep bringing them back. They're like because I'm the most I'm the most unknown guy in this town as far as national exposure. You know what I mean? I'm a one-man show that has survived here 10 years now. And I used to come in there every couple of months since 92. But since 2003, when they took me off the road, I'm a one-man show that has survived all these shows that have opened and closed, opened and closed, opened and closed. And I've done it without this big national power because my show is more of a word-of-mouth show. And I thank these audience members because they are out there telling me, you got to see this guy. That's the He's out of his friggin' mind. you got to <laughs> see this. He's crazy. You know, because I say the shit that you people are saying in your kitchen about those people outside your house. Right. That's who I am. That's why it's so funny. My house is like you're on a street corner. You're on a corner, and everybody's coming up hanging on the corner shooting the shit about the neighbors and about this one and that ethnicity and what this one's doing to the neighborhood. That's really what the show is, and that's why people like it. It's so politically incorrect. <laughs> people just don't have that anymore. This country has shut you down. You know what I mean? This mm -hmm. country has shut, taken the fun out. And now there's a room you can go. And there's a, a few shows like me around the country. But there's a room you can go to in Las Vegas where, you know what? Leave that shit at the door. Let's go in and hear what we've been thinking to say for a long time. You know what I mean? Right. That's what the show is. Yeah, it's funny because I, I could, everyone next to me, we were all laughing so hard and I could hear people say, oh my gosh, yeah. no he didn't, yeah. he didn't just say that, exactly. because we are all thinking, especially with the uh, 
Habib. I went to your lady today. I'm talking about, what's your name? Betty! And it's that. And I go, you you here with your son? She goes, no, we don't do that in Indiana. She's making the jokes, right? And then 45 minutes later, I'm talking to someone, well, what's your name? She goes, Betty! And I'm like, I already talked to you, you old bat. I'm not talking to you. you know what I mean? Did you hear her yell it out? Yeah. It's crazy. You know? And then you called her Betty yeah. Crocker. Yeah. Or Crocker. Yeah. Well, no, when I first met her, she said Betty when she was so old. I went, Crocker? <laughs> but she was great. She was great. Anyway, come see Vinny here at the Fabulous Flamingo. Please do. Oh, Eight my gosh. show, seven nights a week. You'll never be the same. You'll have a twitch. That's it. <laughs> It's so good to see you. Thank you. I know. Thank you. You're my first comedian. Oh, you're my I go and definitely come here. See Vinny at the Fabulous Flamingo. Get your tickets at 702-733-3333. And remember, laughter is the best medicine. Right, Vinny? Right. <laughs>